TV. He was on the 6 o'clock news and uh, he was on Avery Haynes' The Inside Story. And uh, during the rash of gun violence that we had this summer, they had this man's story on and I found it incredibly compelling and I asked Avery for his contact information and she gave it to me and lo and behold we are now sitting here in my living room doing the interview for the very first time. <clears throat> so, uh, your story caught my attention while turning into City News, but uh, because I feel like I can relate to you in some ways, I thought that I should definitely have you on to share your story. Now I know your story has been... I know what your story is, but my viewers may not, so uh, let's give them a rundown of how things went for you? Uh, so, uh, basically, just like, I guess just migrating to Canada, like at a young age. Um, I had a lot of, a lot of um, back home distilled qualities, so just like everything was kind of new to me, like being in foreign, as we call it, for like a, it was, it was hard to adjust, because at first I went to school and it's like kids didn't even understand what I was saying. Oh. <laughs> they, couldn't even, they couldn't even pick up on my accent, right? Oh, I, I know how that's like. So I, that alone was frustrating, that alone was difficult. But I, the good thing I had running for me was I was fast at running. I was good at soccer, right? So I was always good at sports. I was athletic, right? So that was a good thing. But then once I started, um, we were a low-income family, like, you know? So like, we, we never had much financially. You know, and then um, shortly after, you know, being in Canada for a while, my mom and my dad, they were getting into a lot of fights and stuff. My dad was very abusive, so um, that kind of got cut short. So it was basically just me and my mom most of the time. And then we had, like, she had another little girl. And then so it was the two of us, well, the three of us. And then it went on to being the four of us. And then so basically what happened was we came to a single-parent home being at, being at a young age and then. My mom trying to do as much as she can do to keep the family together in the home. She was working, going to school, working, going to school, so there wasn't that time. She didn't have the capacity to put in as much as she needed to put in for a young male growing up that needed more of like a father figure at that point in time. Oh, yeah, understandably. I, my mother's, uh, well, I grew up in a, with a single mom, too, yeah. so I, I understand that. That's another thing yeah. I can relate to. With you, I know what that's like, and for all the single moms out there, and uh, my best friend Cam is a single mom, and I have so much. <coughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure we're back. Uh, sorry about that, everybody. Uh, if the sound is out of whack, let me just. Uh, it looks like it is a pretty high there. got about four minutes into the last one. <laughs> All right. Sorry about those four minutes. Scratch that. All right. At least we noticed it before we got like an hour into the interview of talking and shit. So back to where we were, where we were talking about how single moms, single moms and being from single parent yeah. homes, it's a, it's a pretty difficult life being a single mom and I give them a lot of respect and shout out to Kim. I don't know if they got caught, but holler and uh, any other single moms out there that uh, I happen to know and I haven't given a shout out. Hello to you too. Back to Kaldrick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shout out to single moms I know too, because I know 
statistic-wise, I know a handful of them. So I'm surrounded by them too. So shout out to single moms that I know. You guys are doing an amazing job. Continue doing it. Uh, it gets stressful, but just know why you're doing it. There's a huge reason sitting right in front of you. So just continue the good work. And then, yeah, back into it now. All right. All right so uh, coming from... Yeah, so no. from a single single parent home, it's just like, you know, my mom doesn't like I'm not a I'm not a bad kid. Like I don't think ev any kid like I know like when they're young, we're like, oh no. my god, he's so bad, he just won't sit down. But when That's we talk, the bad that I'm talking about is is the getting in trouble and the just deviously bad, right? So yeah, you know, I, I was a good kid. Like I I came home from school, um, you know, my mom would go to go to night school. Right, and then I take care of my sisters and stuff like that. And times when she didn't have to go to night school, I go outside and ride my bike, things like that. But it's just like I got to a point where it's like, you know, I needed a male figure because I had two sisters now. So it's just like looking at my mom. It's just like at a certain point, I'm always a mama's boy. Like I love my mom to death. But at a certain point, it's just certain things you look at. Like, you know, my mom couldn't tell me what kind of what kind of kicks was the, the newest and flyest kicks and oh, how yeah. to dress properly and you know how do I pick up a girl and things like that. My mom, my mom could really tell me that plus my mom's old school from the Caribbean so she's like <laughs> <laughs> you know whatever she told me wasn't really gonna work exactly, out in, in no. Canada right so um, and then it, it was just more so finding finding the group of people that were interested in things that caught my interest like the type of music you know, the type of clothes and things that I like to watch and things I like to do. You know, my mom couldn't go out back and shoot hoops with me. My mom couldn't go to the bar court and stuff like that. Uh, you know, no, right? so, no, yeah. You know, so basically what happened was I just, you know, just being outside and seeing some of the older guys and what they were doing and just started taking an interest to it. And, like, I felt like, you know, i got to be like those guys. I felt like i got to be like them. Oh, so yeah. eventually, after a while, you know, that's what happens <laughs> you know you start hanging out with them and you just take on that lifestyle you do what they do act like how they act and things like that you know so that's pretty much the type of life that you live while you were growing up in toronto pretty as, much uh, as a youth yeah. in the city yeah. well i grew up in, in mississauga actually no oh, mississauga yeah, yeah. Uh, touchy question here uh, when at what age or when did you start engaging in like criminal activities and why did you t choose that path first instead of the path of you know, the regular like nine to five job or like being a stock boy at a grocery store or something like that? Well, to be honest with you, I had a nine to five. <laughs> <laughs> you had a nine to five, and I, you did. You did. I, so you were hustling. I had a nine to five, and at the same time, I had a nine to five. Um, but it was just, um, I, I always looked a lot older than I than I than I usually did. So um, at at the age of twelve, you know, helping out around the house and stuff like that, I had a part time job too as well, right? It was working at a shoe store, and then at fourteen, I was working at at Burger King, right? But what happened was I I kind of, I guess in school, I was being viewed at one of the cool kids, one of the cool yeah. guys, right? Yeah. So in, in, in sort of like street lingo, to be that type of person, you have to have this sort of persona. So you got to be tough. Yeah. You got to be feared, um, respected, liked by the girls. Right. Yeah. And oh, I, it was the same way for us. I grew up yeah. in Danforth. It was the same way. <laughs> yeah. The same you exact see? way. Like, Except us, it was Sicilians. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, uh, it's just as bad, if not worse. <laughs> so yeah. At some points back so then. So you, you, you had to, and you had to have like that edge about you that made you you. And then that's when you pick up your little street name, right? Oh, yeah. You pick up your little nickname and whatever and whatever. So um, you had to prove yourself up to that. So I guess it started when... I had to continue proving myself that way, and then um, basically, uh, I got in trouble with police first for like misdemeanor stuff, right? Yeah. So that was like basic stuff like stealing, you know, stealing like from a store, uh -huh. you know, nothing too serious, like you know what I'm saying? Because at that point, like, if I stole like a T-shirt, 
like that was I was like I was like winning the lottery to me, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it was, it was <laughs> five cent candies. The five cent candies, no man, I went for the chocolate bars. I went for the Mr. the Mr. Big and the whole Henry's. I remember back in the day uh, I, I lived kind of a similar lifestyle. So I remember back in the day we used to go in to this uh Chinese guys variety store and we'd walk to the freezer and we'd put our hand in the freezer and then put a freezy up our I'll sleeve and be like, nah, I don't really see anything I like. I think I'm just gonna like, just get this like pop or something. I'd buy like an RC cola, so at least it doesn't look super big. Like thirty five cents. <laughs> <laughs> fifty cents. Fifty cents. That guy was making money off of us. We oh. knew how cheap he was getting them for like oh, wholesale. He went to the price shop it was like thirty. Oh cents. exactly, exactly. That's what I mean. So he's getting it at a good price and he's charging us fifty cents a pop and they were those C plus ones those yeah big. the RC cola the, 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 you know, no the the freezies, oh, the freezies the C you know plus. those fat yeah, freezies man. I like the white ones yeah the, the white, white ones, ones are good the best ones. The, I like the grapefruit ones the grapefruit? Grape, grapefruit's pretty good it reminds me of that drink Ting oh I hate Ting I, the, grape know, one, the grape one's bomb but I hate the orange one no, I like the grapefruit one. The grapefruit one, we got it at the convenience store around the corner here. It is delicious. It reminds me of like, uh, uh, the Grace has one too. Uh, it's like grapefruit soda. Oh, I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, it's you're talking really about. good. I know what you're talking about. But, uh, um, I'm kind of a health nut like that. I try any healthy. Okay, not me. No. Um, I, 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 I eat like shit when it comes to like dinner time I'll order like Pizza Hut or something because it's around the corner but then I'll try to make up for the morning with like a kale shake and like I'll try and get some like the, some protein powder some creatine in there and then go out and do my day but since the accident it's been a little hard and for people out there who don't know I was in a car accident a few months ago and uh it's it's been hell ever since. <laughs> God, uh, back to you, Culture. Um, yeah. So just going back to that, like, so stuff like that, like being able to go into the variety store and walking out with like a freezy or a chip, or yeah. you know, just like even getting away with a T-shirt, like that. That wasn't bad. In our eyes, it was cool no, to be yeah. able to go in and get away with it because everybody would be like, oh, dude. You did that. Like yeah. You got it, you know? Yeah, it gave you a level you. of reputation. Yeah. And that, it was the same way with us, like, as kids growing up on the Danforth. It's like, if you didn't do at least something bad, yeah. you were considered a nerd. Yeah. And, and it goes with what I say. It's like, when I was growing up, it seemed like in order for me to get any type of attention whatsoever, it had to be something bad. Oh yeah, yeah. Which, oh, exactly. Which is kind of what one of our issues are now. It's like a lot of the good stuff doesn't get celebrated enough. No, it but doesn't. the bad, the bad stuff. It's not that it gets celebrated, but it gets entertained. It's 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 entertaining. It's juicy. It's it's sexy. You know, yeah, so oh, people yeah. attract to it. So it gets that attention. Oh, definitely. Right? So definitely. just by paying attention to it, you're actually entertaining it. Yeah. Right. You're so, entertaining the thought. At least. Exactly. Right. And, and giving the thought any mind is that's where, that's where the the problem starts. Exactly, that, that's the, where the problem starts because once you get that thought, be like, well, since I got out of that, why don't I go do some car hopping? Since that's what the rest of my friends are doing. Well, I, I migrated quick. <laughs> I migrated quick because I got away with those things, so it was like, all right, I'm, I can get away with some other things. Yeah, right? yeah. So I went to larger things. And then, um, like that stuff, I won't really speak about. But no, it went from no. stuff from the convenience store, the so, stuff that you can actually get yeah, some real trouble. Yeah, with, you know. Like I um, have, like a, I'm willing to talk about my friend who's locked up right now, Sean, and he's he's my best friend. He's like a brother to me, and he did some stupid shit. And like back in the day, he had. ADHD and they were always looking for a label to put on this kid but they oh, okay. and that, like some I remember it was like I got held back a year in grade 8 so I had to do grade 8 twice <coughs> and some I like, can relate to that too man. some grade 6 <laughs> some grade 6 year old like some grade 6 kid came up to him and said something about his mom 
in the morning before school started. He walked all the way back home, grabbed a kitchen knife, and came back to school to stab this kid. Oh, and like, he is just like, he's, he was a psycho in that aspect of it, but like, he ended up getting stopped before anything bad happened in any bad situation oh, arose. Good. But I remember all, the way I found out was he was in handcuffs and he got loose from the cops. So he was running through the school <laughs> with handcuffs behind his back, just running. And he ran all the way back to his house and hid in the garage. <laughs> How did he make it back to his house, though? That was like, it wasn't that far. far. Yeah, it wasn't that far. far. No, and it was like a back pathway to the house oh, that we lived no. at. So, like, and the cops couldn't get back there with squad cars. You oh. needed like an ATV or a motorcycle to get back there, or, like bike cops. And I, that's when I lived in Bowmanville. Shout out to everybody in Bowmanville watching Oli. He's my best friend. Who he's a, a, a rapper. Oh, he's okay. a, who I interviewed a couple of episodes ago. He's a, he's an up and coming star. He's got big things ahead. So keep an eye true, out for him. True, true, true. But back to you. Enough about me. <laughs> um, yeah, man. So it went it went over to that, and I actually. I actually picked up my first charge um, for uh, unlawful use of a credit card. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so I picked up a charge with that. Um, but I'm young at this point. This is I'm, I'm like what, like 14 maybe, right? So, so uh, the wonderful Young Offenders Act of Canada comes into play. Ah, uh, there we go. And then so, so then um, that quickly turned into. You know, um, and and the thing is, it's like it's a label that I took on because the school that I went to, I wasn't I wasn't a bad kid at school at all. No. I was loved by the teachers. No. Um, I was loved by you know like students and peers and friends and whatever, right? And and like whenever I went to school, I wasn't the troublemaker in school. I wasn't really that type, right? But it's just that there were certain things that I would just fall into play because I was viewed. Um, differently by like the principals and stuff like that so I actually got held back a grade and you know sometimes when I tell people this story they say it's illegal for a principal to do that but hey no, he, did it, he did it back in that day yeah. right and then so this principal like he was like some ex like Navy dude or something <laughs> like he really he should have been a police officer because he really wanted to be that uh, type of person that hard, uh, and that hard, uh, I guess like to be honest you know, I guess like he, he just really was upset with himself that he became a principal. You know, and I won't, you know, I won't be afraid to say his name, Mr. Gill. I still don't like you to this day, <laughs> but I hope everything is all right. Um, but so he had it out for me. He really had it out for me. And so what happened was we were leaving school, and then I was I was in the, the last grade, the higher grade, and then. Um, a few of my few of the little kids like in the because it was like a grade six to eight um, school right so I was in grade eight at the time now yeah and then these dudes one of them was in grade seven one of them was in grade six right but they're they're my little homies right so we were walking home and then there's these two little um, Italian kids and at, at the front and they were kind of just like play fighting with um, my homeboy's little brother yeah so as we're walking out now my homeboy's little brother's like oh here comes, you know, here comes Kaldrick and, and such and such, and they're, 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 they're Crips. They're Crips or Bloods. I don't, I don't remember what he said, right? And he's like, they're going to kick your ass. <laughs> I'm just like, so it was just like all the joke thing, right? So yeah. we went over to, to the kid, and I put my arm over his shoulder, and I said, and I said to him, so I played along with him, I'm like, I'm like, do you know who I am? And he's like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, so why are you, why are you getting into a fight with my little boy here? Like, what's going on? Like, I, I might have to do something to you. And as soon as I said that, the kid just ran off screaming into the school. I, I dropped his backpack, everything. That's and we're standing up. Scenario. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're standing out there laughing, right? Man, principal comes out, says he's charging me for assault. <laughs> I said, holy shit. So. Yeah. So we went, we went, um, I went home actually, right, I went home and then, um, 
<laughs> one time. And this phone never rings. Never. Never <laughs> rings. So yeah, man, I went home and then lo and behold, a couple hours later, man, police showed up at my door. You know, and charged me for assault, went to court. So that's not, when it, that, that was your first charge? No, 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 that was my second charge. That was your Because the credit card one came in first. <laughs> and then that one came in and that's when it just all started it was a spiral yeah like because it went from from going to the police station and my mom coming in yeah. and then them letting me go to my mom that's something that a lot of people I don't think realize at home that once something like that happens it's it's hard enough to recover from the one act it's the series of events that Not unfold it. because of that one act that you made. Because yeah. kids made, make stupid decisions every day. Every day. You just made a stupid decision that had innate consequences that you had no idea what the repercussions were going to be. Yeah. You knew, but you didn't, you were just like, ah, I ain't going to be know, that bad. Yeah, because to be honest with you, and you know, as messed up as it sounds, that credit card thing, I learned it from an adult, <laughs> and this is like an adult that wasn't, you know, in any crime or anything like that. Though I'm live right now. I guess I guess not, but I'm live right now. I learned I, it. I learned it from an adult. I'm live on a podcast. Behind. All right. So, um, when I seen that adult do it and get away with it, I was just like, you know, yeah, shit, I, mean, I I could do that. Exactly. And then the way how things unfolded was just crazy stupid but then you know from when I got that that assault charge from the principal now from the school and then you know that one I went through trial and everything and from then it just it just I can't even remember to tell you specifically how it went bad but from then it went bad yeah so at the age of 14 you know from there on all right and so like say you were to sit down with like a 14 year old kid boy or girl that's headed down the same exact path that you were yeah. headed down, what would you tell them? Depending on the circumstance, because I've, I've actually been in that situation, and I told dude, come hang out with me for the day. Yeah? Yeah. We went, we got something, we talked. We talked, we walked, we got something to eat, came back to my crib, we played some PS3, and then um, after that, you know, I left and walked with him, and and you know I had a long talk because the thing is it's like I right off the bat I can't tell you you know any type of words that's gonna help you out right there other than you know get at me let me let me, let me work with you yeah. right because every individual situation is different right so um, for that individual he he was a part he was part of like a, a gang and he just felt like that was his protection, but he didn't want to be doing the things that they did, and he just didn't want to be a part of it anymore, but he was afraid that once he leaves that, um, his there protection isn't there anymore, anymore, and then with the other people that they got beef with, right, he's basically alone, he's by himself. Yeah, right? and that's what a lot of people don't realize, is that beef, beef follows you for a little while. Yeah. It follows you for a long time, yeah. and I'm st like, I had beef, in grade like 11 or 12 that I stopped to, to look over my shoulders today yeah like, and like I'm like I see a person who somewhat looks like them. I'm like is that them like it, yeah I catch myself and I'm, I don't carry weapons but I know for a fact that the other person does yeah so I, 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 it, it's, it's something I'm, I'm constantly and the worst part was is <clears throat> for the longest time we both went to Warden Station to catch our buses. <laughs> both of us went, and, he, and his, bu my bus, like in Warden Station, <coughs> kind of. Uh, yeah, they had that bus terminal. Yeah. Well, here's my bus comes in right here, and his bus comes in right there. I took the 102. He took the 16. Okay, so uh, you're, you're looking at him, and he's looking down at you. Yeah, and there, <laughs> and there had been plenty of times where, like, I hadn't seen him. And he's fully just watching me doing like, like tracking me, yeah. like a, like a hunter. And then he'd like just will fully walk into me and hit me in the shoulder out of nowhere uh, and be like, watch where you walk. Yeah, yeah. 
so that he knows that I'm here, I'm watching you, and, and, and don't you forget that. And I was like, is that necessary? Well, yeah, he's got he's to gotta, he's gotta let you know that you need to fear him. Yeah. Even though he might still fear you, he needs to make you fear him. But the thing, like, uh, the thing is, is that uh, he's, uh, the, the, the beef started over a fucked up situation that I don't, like, uh, to get into it, it's, it's a long story, yeah. but he is accusing me of something that uh, supposedly happened, but it didn't, like, it, it got cleared up, the situation well, got re rectified, and I had no tie to, it happened between my stepfather and somebody else. So I, I was just the stepson. Oh, okay. Well, like, you, know, like, you know what I mean? It like, it's, like, it, it's like if somebody comes to you and says, oh, well, your cousin robbed me, so I'm going to come get you. That's how it goes, though. I know, but like, I don't understand it. Like, I, but... I don't understand. I, 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 I was like, I was like, I, what are you talking? Like when he came up to me the first day, and he's just like, "You're a goof, this, that, and the other thing," and you know them, the goof is back in the day. Goof was a messed that, up word. Yeah, there's more messed up words now. But yeah, back in the day, yeah. Someone call you a goof, and, uh, and, and you to your face, you're not that dude. Fighting that. words, you like, not that dude. Yeah, that. and a lot of older guys would, if they, if you walked up and called them a goof, they would knock you out. If you walk up to like a, a, a 45 year old guy who's been in and out of, yeah. of the pen his entire life and you call him a goof, he knows exactly what, what you, mean. you mean. You think it stemmed from Goofy? Remember Goof Troop? <laughs> That's what I always thought. I thought. Every time I heard that word, I thought about I, it. I always always thought that that's where I stuck I'm not about it. I'm like, my, I heard my dad say it in the car one time, but my, to my dad, it doesn't have the same meaning yeah. that you and I know about. I thought about it, because Goofy was dumb. Yeah! <laughs> so I thought maybe that's where the, the name came from, and if you want to call me a goof, well, like, the goof thing is, is, that, that, is that, But, like, a, a goof, to call somebody a goof is, like, rape hound, uh, all that fucking... Bullshit! Like he's a yeah. red pound. He's a pedophile. He's a snitch. He's ignorant. He doesn't. He's he it carries, it carries he everything. It's like one title that carries all. Yeah, of it's just the one thing you me. don't ever want to be called. Yeah. In jail, at least. Uh, <laughs> see, that's out the here. It's like what well, it has no significant meaning to a child. To a child, that word means nothing. It means eh, goofy. <laughs> there's, there's other like, words in that. But that's one thing I, I I probably would tell, you know, a younger individual is just like, yo, dude, I was where you're at. I went down there. I'm back up here now, and God knows I wish I never went there. Yeah. Like, <laughs> God knows I wish there. I never went there. Like, that's one thing I could tell because the thing is, it's like, when when you become, see, I never, I was never actually part of a gang, never. No. But I hung out with gang members. Yeah. I hung out with with people and I did gang related activities exactly. but I was never fully part of a gang but you that get labeled as a gangster just yeah. from doing that exactly from no. the actions right yeah so but the thing is like I, and, and I always have a brain just like everybody else does it's just how and when you use it right yeah um, but when you become part of a crew part of a gang part of a clique you don't you're not you're not necessarily an individual anymore and that's what a lot of a lot of people don't realize because you become a part of it because you feel like it, it's it's something that you need to be a part of. It's it's a group that you can relate to. It, you know, it's a group of people that 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 you can roll with and whatever. So you're part of something. So a lot of people do it for that belonging. Oh yeah. Right. But what you don't realize is what happens is you really actually belonging. So you have no ownership to yourself at all whatsoever. Oh yeah. Right? That, that's another thing. You have no sure. ownership to yourself because your gang's beef is your beef, right? And Which is the stupidest yeah. thing ever. And your gang's situation is your situation because, like, I could be chilling at home this day because my mom made my ass stay home and because she had something to go do and I have to stay home and watch my sisters, right? Yeah. And my crew went out and they got themselves into some fucked up shit. Now, when police are looking for them now, or whoever is looking for them, they're coming to you. Right? They see me, they're gonna come to me because that's 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 who I am. I'm that gang. Right? Yeah. I'm not Caldrick. I'm not yeah. an individual. So a lot of 
a lot of young people don't really realize that 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 that's exactly what you're taking on, and and that some of the times it's like, you know, they see more benefit in being part of the crew. Oh yeah. Even if sure. they see that that's what you're taking on, they see oh, more yeah. benefit than less. But really, it's it's reverse. And well, then that, that I think that all started in the '90s, definitely. especially in the '90s. Like that's when like. Yeah, but it, it, sta- it started before then, like in the 70s and whatnot, what? with the oh, Italians. Yeah. Because, like, if you look at the movie Goodfellas, perfect example of what you're talking about. How uh, you had a crew, but. Uh, or even, like, uh, have you ever seen the movie A Bronx Tale? I've never seen A Bronx Tale. A Bronx Tale. The guy has, like, a, a little crew, but they're not part of the mafia or anything like yeah. that. It's just, like, a crew of people who are connected to people who are, say, either, like, in your case, gang members, Crips, Bloods, whatever it may be, or it could be, in my case, say, like, some, like, mafia guy from Montreal, Mm -hmm. Sicilian mob, like, that, it's the same exact thing, thing. It's it's just at a different level. But I see where you're coming from when you said it started back in the nineties, like it, yeah, it was before that, but in the nineties it was like it was it became if you were, yeah, it became if you were approached, they didn't say who you who are you, where you're from. No. Right? It's just like yo, who you what crew what crew are you with? Who yeah. you representing? Who you with? Right? And it's like if you're not saying nothing, then yeah. you ain't nothing. Exactly. So it's like so now you're sitting there saying like shit, I gotta be part of a crew because I need to be something. Right? So, you know, that was that was that was real heavy. It was glorified at that time, and you know, a lot of those dudes now because he, I, I I still talk to some of the OGs I know, and they're just like, man, that was some stupid shit that I was doing. That was some oh, even they shit will tell you doing. like it, uh, like they did some stupid shit. Yeah, and had they the, like even some of like the OGs that I know. They said, you know what, if I had a chance to do it differently, I would. I would. I would do it too. Uh, like, I'm not an OG. I no, be an OG. I, and I'm not either, but I like, I didn't I didn't get, I never graduated high school, never graduated college, I never Same graduated here. university, here, but yet I'm starting my own show. Same here. Like, I never did none of that stuff, and... and I'm I'm a guest on your show. Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. Like, see, I'm glad to be on your show, and you're proud to have me here. And I, I mean, right. this is ex- this is what excites me. Like, uh, talking to people who interest me excites me, and I want to share my excitement with my viewers, my listeners, and that's why I, I hope that uh, the, the show stems. I'm like, excited. Thanks for having me, man. For I'm real, like, guys, this is awesome. This is this is a great interview. But uh, as crazy as it as it is, the, in a country like Canada, there's still a lot of poverty out there, and of course, it's going to cause some people to lead to crime, right? Mm-hmm. And what do you feel some of these people are missing in their lives? For one, definitely religion, God. Yeah. Um, I say religion first because you know he's been called different names in different religion. So religion, for one, two, culture. Even if it's a, like, even if, like, people will say religion, like, even if it's, like, it doesn't have to be, all right, you have to go become a Catholic. No, you don't. You have to go no. become a Muslim. I don't mean you that. You have to, that. like, find go the church spiritual like, that if, you believe in. If, exactly. A guiding light or a force that, 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 that does right. Gives and you that know. positive energy. Yeah, and exactly. That gives you and that's what he means. Something people. to want to, I don't mean like get up tomorrow and go find a church and, or go to a mosque and, you know, you know, do that and, but just more so when I, when I, if we can put it as faith, you know what I'm saying? Because it's all the same thing, but you need that inside of you because that distills so many things. It distills fear. It distills hope. Um, faith positiveness right and it makes you want it makes you want more of yourself yeah right and then when you throw culture into that because you know a lot of times like I realized like yeah I came from the Caribbean right and I came in and I adapted to the culture that was going on in the streets here and a lot of dudes are repping for their block you know what I'm saying like I was born in St. Vincent so I'm gonna come to Canada and I'm gonna rep for an intersection you know what I'm saying 
And it's like, that's so far away from my culture, yeah. but I've made that my culture, and that's the life that I'm living. And I'll take a bullet for for those two streets. <laughs> like, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, and it don't make any sense at all whatsoever, right? Because that's that's nothing of what I am. That's nothing of what my culture is, right? Yeah. And, and a lot of us get so far away from that, you know? And, and you just start becoming a product of your environment. And it's so easy to become a product of your environment. Oh, yeah. right? But you also got to understand that, you know, it's just like going to a grocery store, right? There's a lot of products in the, in the, in the, a soup aisle, you know what I'm saying? Oh, but yeah. some are better than others. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. why you got to be, why you got to be the no-name brand? <laughs> Everybody looks down. I'm not knocking the no, 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 no. You know, but uh, why, why can't you be the Campbell's, Chuck? Uh, you know exactly. what I'm saying? I, uh, you can I do that. Exactly you're still in the soup saying. aisle. You're still in the soup aisle with the rest of the soups. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. My analogies are crazy. <laughs> no, <laughs> that, that makes perfect sense. It makes, it makes sense. sense. If it makes sense to you guys. It makes perfect sense. But, yeah, my analogies are crazy. Like, <laughs> you know, but, yeah, man, that's, that's one of the main things. But also, it's just, like, for me, it's finding something finding something that that really makes you want more of yourself and you know a, a lot of the stuff I was doing stopped when I had when I had my first daughter right shows man so <laughs> children change everything yeah. don't go around and having kids if you're not ready but yeah. you know um I had my first daughter and that that kind of because the game. yeah especially because it was a little girl too I was like, oh man, shit, yo. <laughs> you know. So I, I had to want more from myself because I don't wanted to grow up to be that no name soup in the soup body. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, you yeah. wanted to be the chunky Campbell yeah. soup. <laughs> you know, even though I might sound weird, <laughs> y'all get what we're talking about, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, and uh, another thing I wanted to touch on is that uh, I think your organization that you're with is incredibly amazing <coughs> and will definitely make a difference. Can you tell me and the viewers at home more about Breaking the Cycle? Um, Alright, well, first before I get into Breaking the Cycle, I have to shout them out. So shout-outs to Breaking the Cycle. Big shout-outs to the man up top, John. Um, shout-outs to Shaka, Gary, Zora, OG Mike. Everybody, shouts to Ray. Everybody that's 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 part of the BTC group. All the ambassadors, the class I was with, um, my homie Tristan. We just linked up with you know everybody doing their thing. Um, oh, and Jamoke, Alicia, you guys, you guys already know BTC all the way. But program is amazing. Program's dope. Right. Is there a, a, a website people can go yes. to to find out more so information about the end? To find out more information, I, I should have, but just a lot of stuff was jumbled, so I didn't even have one of the cards with me right now. But there is a Breaking the Cycle website. Um, you can Google it. Um, for short, we call it BTC. Um, but you can Google it um, with uh, the whole Avery Hain stuff and whatever, and, and just uh, a lot of stuff that's been going on. They're out there now, so you can definitely find them on the web. Oh, yeah. Just type in Breaking the Cycle. Um, and uh, you can also find them through CTI. Um, so, uh, yeah, just Google CTI or Breaking the Cycle, BTC for short. And there's two locations. So there's a location out here in Scarborough on Progress. And that's and then the first location. Yeah, and then the second location is um, in um, Rexdale which is uh, just off of Albion and Highway 27 there. Perfect. perfect. Um, I wish there were more. <laughs> well, the, were more. the thing is, is if there's a way to get more funding to you guys through somebody who watches or listens to this on iTunes or mm -hmm. on uh, who watches it on Vimeo, then you, you know where to shout these guys out that breaking the cycle Definitely. and look them up on uh, the S short form BTC. Google that. Ooh, that shit ASAP. <laughs> <laughs> Breaking the cycle. And, and even if you can't get a hold of it, you know, if they can get a hold of you, you can oh, yeah. get a hold of me. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, Breaking the cycle really gave me a life. When oh, I, like yeah. like I said on the, the inside story, I went into them and I said, I want a future, and they gave that to me. Or, or actually, in, in, in other words, I took that from them. 
right? Yeah, we'll tell them I took I took a future from them, and that's what's so unique about the program, right? Um, they're there for you to use, for you to use to. And the thing is that there's a, a a future available there to be taken. Yes, definitely. If you want it for others, yeah. If you want it, because yeah. right, the program is the way how it works. It's it works different for everyone, right? And you can get so much out of it. You just gotta want it, because you know a couple of my classmates got some out of it. Probably not as much as they wanted to. Oh, yeah. But that's based on them. I got everything I wanted. Exactly. Right. Um, and you know, if you just just come out and hang out with us for a day. You know. There's a handful of us that'll sit down and tell you, you know, how it is. Come over to the BTC group, sit down, have a chat with us, you know, and I guarantee you probably won't want to leave because a lot of times we sit down and we start talking and no one ever wants to leave. But, you know, we got to go. <laughs> Appointments, times, stuff like that. Oh, yeah. So once you were out of the gang lifestyle, did you find it difficult to reinstate yourself back into society? And like, what was the biggest obstacle that you found? Difficult, hell yeah. Um, one of the biggest obstacles was sustaining my mental position, right? Which was basically, you know, some of the friends I hung out with, it wasn't to diss them into just like, throw them off to the side and because you know there's still people that I grew up with it was just more to sort of figure out what roles they played in my life and how to deal with them accordingly right and help those who I can and you know try to do more for the, the ones that I can't um, and then just keeping myself level right because back then like you know I was an angry person oh, right yeah. so you know you could set me off easily but now it's just like I said you know I got I left there with like a tool belt, so any job, any work, any labor came my way, you know, I was able to pull out a tool from my belt that could help me handle that job, help me deal with it, and do it well, right? So, um, basically, it was keeping that, and also just, just the, <laughs> the criminal record, man. Yeah. The criminal record. That's the that's the hardest thing to beat. Oh, no, no, that's that the hardest no, thing no. to beat. Because, I mean, like, like I've been pulled over by cops, and it's just like, you know, I know that I'm this different person now, right? But, man, it don't even make no sense telling them. Yeah. It don't even make no sense saying nothing, right? Because they type up your name, and that's who you are. You know what I'm saying? That's, well, that's who you are. The thing my, with me is uh, there's another Jordan Thompson that I actually went to elementary school with in Bowmanville. And the only difference is his last name has a hyphen Yates. Okay. So when they run me up and they say, did you live in Bowmanville? And I reply, yes. They're like, so you're Jordan Thompson Yates and you had all these blah, blah, blah. blah. This, 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 this. <laughs> No, you got the wrong joint tone. Yeah, uh, you're not. If you run my name, you're not gonna find it in the system for whatever reason it is. The only reason, the only way you'll find me is if uh, you have my license. That's a, that's the only way they'll yeah. find no, me in the they, system. The criminal record is the hardest thing because, like, not only just issues in dealing with, like, um, with like police and stuff like that, but also just getting into certain facilities, getting into, you know, um, certain training programs. Like from, from, from young, I always wanted to be a firefighter, still do. Like I love the community work that I do to the bone, and I'll do that till the day I die. But deep down inside me, that little kid still wants to be a firefighter. And I, I can't even do that, you know what I'm saying? Because I, of the criminal because record. Because of the criminal record, right? So a lot of things I can't I can't get. Yeah, past. isn't there a way that you can go about getting a pardon to do those things? Yeah, there is. Um, like a seven year thing though. No, now now it's, it's now it's it's longer. Now it's um. Oh, it's longer. I, I forgot. Like I thought it was five years, but I heard now it's like it's like ten or somewhere Jeez. around there. Like it's it's heavy, or even or I think it might be five years. But what it is is now it's not a full pardon. It's just sort of, so what happens is before, back in the day when you got a pardon, when your name was typed up, you didn't, there was nothing, nothing showed up. But now, what shows up is that, yes, 
you do have a criminal record or did, but they just can't see what what the, the charges and stuff are. But it shows that so that literally does nothing doesn't for do anybody. anybody. And you know, for those that's listening, if you have three or more indictable offenses, you don't get it. <laughs> so wow, yeah. Jeez. So now they've made it even harder to come back from that, which is one of the biggest issues. So that's one thing that frustrates me, and I don't understand it because now you made it harder for you know for me and many others to reintegrate back into society the yeah. way that you know we would like to do positively, right? And and that that's messed up because it's like oh, we have so much negative this, so much negative that, but you make it harder for the negative to become positive, which makes no sense, right? Do you feel that Torontonians have become more aware and more cautious in the light of the recent violence? It's been anywhere from going to a mall, to a barbecue, even at the cafe. Do you think Toronto will ever be the same? And then when you take into account what's happened in Aurora, Colorado, and then with the Sikh shooting, and then uh, I'm pretty sure they had something else after that as well. You see, definitely a lot of people now are opening their eyes to it. Um, now, do you think, that, actually, let me ask this first too. Do you think it's it's more prevalent now, or do you think that there's just more people paying attention now. I think there's more people paying attention. Yeah, you right? think it's always been this it's, prevalent? It's always, and like I was gonna say, there's there's a group of people that know it and know it's there, known it's been there, and it's been just as devastating. Excuse me. But there's a group of people that were that didn't know. You know what I'm saying? They they didn't care. They didn't pay attention. They didn't want to know. They were oblivious to it. You know, they were, they were, that's not them. That's not, you know, they don't even live in those neighborhoods and whatnot. But now, with the, the mall and the cafe and things like that, it's opened their eyes because it's like, shit, I shop at that mall, man. I go to the bay over there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So now. Yeah, everybody in Toronto has at one point in time shopped at the Eaton Center. Exactly. And what I find even more crazy is that girl, Rebecca, the girl, she survived the Eaton Center shooting and to go to Aurora, Colorado. And die there. And die in the massacre in Aurora. When I, when I heard that story, I sat down and said the irony. <laughs> that's, a, that's some final destination shit. Yeah, and when her when her boyfriend was saying was was telling that um, before she went to the movie, they were talking about the stuff that was happening in Toronto. Wow. And so when I heard that, that, that actually made me sad because it's the irony. Like you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it, it's really upsetting. She was a young journalist. Like she like and. Since I've started doing this podcast, I kind of feel a, a bond with journalists because uh, it's that's almost right. the, the, same, right it's, yeah. it's the same thing that I'm doing. It's just I'm doing it in a, in a way that it's, it's free form and, excuse me, I don't have boundaries like they do. Mm -hmm. Like I can cover whatever I want. If I, I wanted to, I could go over there as long as I'm not on camera because it, I yeah. can't get my channel to go away. <laughs> but I could go over there and spark a joint. And you can't do that during your work at City mm -hmm. TV. And you can't no. go off yeah. camera and smoke a joint yeah. real quick in between commercial breaks. Like, you can't do shit like yeah. that. But, like, that's why I like having my own, like, workplace. Usually we're in a studio for those people who watch us regularly. Where, and uh, the, the, I've just been having issues getting the studio at particular times, and, but I, I have some, like, I, I'm going to be interviewing some uh, adult cam models, okay. and those I need, I need access to a flat screen, so okay. those ones are probably going to have to do with the studio, and those ones for the viewers are there going to be quite interesting, <laughs> very interesting, because this world of cam modeling is amazing. It's like I've, I've watched it evolve over the past 
couple of years, I've always been a, like a cam person. Like, I've always been into the, the webcamming porn sites, I guess okay. you could say. And, like, before, you used to pay, like, a dollar ninety nine a minute. Or, like, you could find somebody as low as, like, a dollar forty nine a minute. Now it's, like, a token setup. Like Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> serious. Like, you do $20, buys you 250 tokens, and girls have it set up. Like, 50 tokens, I'll show you my tits. 100 tokens, I'll show you my pussy. And 1,000 tokens, I'll rub my pussy until I come. Shit. And like that's a different type of stream right there. Man. Yeah, like that, I f and it's incredibly fascinating because there's girls who have been doing this shit for like the past five years, six years, and like they've been there while the world has evolved for it. That's gonna be and interesting. Yeah, I got a bunch of girls from my free cams coming soon, so they're 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 gonna be quite interesting. I have a poker girl, sixty nine. Uh, Muse, uh, there's gonna be a Brandy Doe, a few other models from that side, and that, that, that's when my, like, I've been in the process of taking this show and feeling out what I'm gonna do with it, mm -hmm. and I want to do serious things like me and you right now, but I want to do those light-hearted things I'm like the cam models the are going to be audio. fun they're going to be giggly because they're going to be all they're, they're, they're models they're, they're bound it's to be giggly to be serious, right but, yeah mm, like that's why I don't I don't have my comedy or I don't have this listed in the, the charts as news or politics or anything like that I have it listed under comedy because that's in the long run that's what I, I plan to do is comedy okay. And uh, I'm just actually working up the courage to do an open mic night one day. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, it's, that's, it's, that's a different level. Yeah, it's, it's, it's level. incredibly hard. And I've had a couple of comics from L.A. who told me to go and like do a five-minute bit at open mic night. And, like, why don't you do it? It's, well, the reason why I haven't done it is because I, I have jokes that I have written down. It's just I'm finding a way to transition from each joke to the other joke of oh, what I'm working on. Going into yeah, I'm working oh. on uh, my segues. Oh, okay, okay. That's what I'm working on. And then, like any comedy writers, you want to write me some segues, I'll send you my jokes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's it's and that's that's a whole nother beast in and of itself because uh, right now, uh, hopefully. They watch this, but I'm trying to get Sam Tripoli from the Naughty Show, Vicky Pezza from the Naughty Show, and uh, the big man himself, Joe Rogan, mm. for uh, Fear Factor, UFC, and the, the Joe Rogan Experience podcast, and have him come on, because they're in Toronto on the 21st doing oh, okay. a comedy show. And I'm trying to, I've been trying to get at Sam for a while, and uh, trying to get at Red Band who's uh, their producer, but they did their cam girl last night, or oh, not okay. last night, the other night, and I, I haven't watched the interview yet, but I'm like, it's my competition <laughs> now, and then my competition, so that's exactly have, what I was you doing. Have, you have your style, yeah. you do it your way, oh, yeah. and there is no competition. Oh, right? exactly, exactly. Uh, Alright, so let's move on with uh, this... Uh, Interview we got going. We've only been going for a little bit still. So, uh, what do you think about male teens with absentee fathers? Can well, the way this is written out doesn't make sense. What do you think male teens with absentee fathers can do to go down the right path? I see it all the time. Sometimes even orphans grow up to be really successful. How do you feel they can find their inner strengths? To be honest with you. Um, it's a difficult question. It's I a mean. difficult question because it's like, it's like you said, inner strength with each individual, right? So, um, the answer is actually in the question itself that you just mentioned, which is 
just find it in the tr- inner strength, dude. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, nobody's worthless. Everybody has a purpose, has a talent. You can read, write, walk, talk. You have all these basic functions. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Right? Just find your inner you, like me. For a while it was music, but like for me, cars. And my friends tell me, why don't you just be a mechanic? I'm like, I don't want to be a mechanic. No. I'm, not, I'm not trying to get my hand. Look at my hands. These, <laughs> these are some pretty hands. You know what I'm saying? No homo. These are some pretty <laughs> ass hands. These aren't mechanic uh, hands. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, yeah, I get you. Because that's what I was for years. Was just, that, that's the route I was going to go. But I was gonna go the mechanic route because I'm the same exact way. Yeah, it's fun. like I'm into But I found music now. Music is what I like, and this is what I like: the talking just, and the music. Just driving and just like working on cars. Like I mean, any any given day, like if I if I had holes in my socks, before I go buy a pair of new socks, I go buy something to put on my car. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. So like yeah, that's like just Josh. that's just me. Like taking care of myself. Like just. You know, when it comes to my kids and my mom, my sisters, you know, my girlfriend, everybody, like, yeah. taking care of me when I take care of myself, it's like right? Car part. It's for car. The car is myself. <laughs> like I told her, like one time I called her and I said, listen, I'm going to ask you something about the car. I just want your opinion. If you think it looks good or not, right? Don't penalize me about it because my car is the only thing that I own. So, <laughs> I, you know, that stuff keeps me calm. Yeah. I'm into everything that has to do with cars. Keeps yeah. me calm, and well, jewelry is another thing, but that's that's an expensive habit right there. Yeah. So. So with the you said music earlier. So do you find that with music and the the rich, glamorized, gangster lifestyle that had that has to do with a lot of the things that youths are dealing with mm. these days because they're trying to emulate these rappers who literally don't have any means to be doing the things that they're doing. Like, I, I, I right, lately I've been using Rick Ross as an example. Mm-hmm. Rick Ross, the, the, the rapper, Rick Ross, s- stole the name Rick Ross from Freeway Ricky Ross. And Freeway Ricky Ross was the guy who was getting his coke from Noriega when he started, and he was dealing with the FBI, and he started dealing crack in L.A. They had it set up like a McDonald's, Mm -hmm. where, like, you walked up to a window, and you made your order, and they gave you your shit, and you walked up, and he didn't find out that he was dealing with the FBI until after he got busted. So, like... (coughs) And this is the, another thing that people don't realize is that when Rick Freeway Rookie Ross got out of jail, he sued Rick Ross, the rapper, mm-hmm. for copyright infringement copyright. for using his name. Yeah. And they said, no, sorry, the statute of limitations is up. You have 10 years to do something like that. Shit. Like 10 years. <laughs> it has, this guy hasn't been rapping for 10 years, and I've had this life my or this name my oh, entire yeah. life yeah. and this guy can just take my name and make money off of it like that so he's been going after Rick Ross for that and and a lot of things if you listen to Rick Ross's music it's incredibly gangsterish like there's like every other word is nigga that nigga this blah 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 and I'm gonna rob you I'm dealing rocks I'm dealing this I got diamonds because I'm dealing this and the guy is an ex correctional officer <laughs> yeah, he is an ex CO now when you're gonna do that you got an image to portray and like I understand you got an image to portray, but you know what? When you have a background that's accessible mm-hmm. like that, like today, exactly. you can't front like that today. No. Like, and I liked Rick Ross when he came out. Like Port of Miami, that was a bomb CD. That was yeah. a bomb mixtape. I still, a, I still listen to Rick Ross now. But yeah. Like, with with a lot, like a lot of the music that I listen to, like that type of music, like the new. Rapping, I, I'm more of like a, a reggae dude, but the, 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 the rap and all that stuff, the new stuff, the way how my, my brain functions now is that I'm able to dissect things a lot more sufficient. So 
So I can, that that type of music has no effect on me other than something for me to bump my head to when I like yeah. and whatever. And I think that's the difference when you grow up. Exactly. The There's, it, when you're it, it becomes like that. It's just more, I, I listen to a lot of old school music. Um, so I, I like to listen to, because when you listen to some of the old music, like that stuff is real stuff that happens, right? And so those kind of relax me a bit and sometimes dictate my mood, but all the new stuff, it's just something to dance to, something to move my head to, it, it, it doesn't really yeah. take, and for a lot of individuals that's looking into that, like a lot of the young kids and whatever, um, like, I don't know how to get it across to you and how to let you know, what it's not real, it's on TV, if you cannot step inside your TV and do that shit, then it ain't real, like, you get what I'm saying? Oh, of course. It ain't real, it's on the box. Go do what's real. Uh, Go do what's right in front oh of yeah. you. Oh Go yeah. do what's real right in front of you. For sure. There's another question here that I wanted to ask you. Uh, wow. What challenges do you think lie ahead for you, and what do you hope to happen in the next couple of years? Uh, Challenges, life itself is a challenge, but um, basically dying without any regrets. Yeah. The only, the only messed up part about that is I'll never know that until I die. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm That's saying? One way. That That's I the only messed up part. So, but I gotta live. Like you got no regrets. That's you get it. what I'm saying? Yeah. Right? So, but one of the biggest challenges would be really just making myself a mark and not a stain. Yeah. Right? Um, a mark is something substantial, something that, that's noticed and, you know, appreciated, you know, most of the times, depending on how you look at it. But a stain is something bad. You didn't want it there. It just is there. You can't get rid of it. You can't get it out. You know, I'd rather be a mic instead of a stain. And, you know, another challenge would be my kids. You know, I got two little girls. And, you know, even though, you know, they're at a certain age, I still have a lot to learn in oh, raising yeah. two little girls. Especially with girls. And just accomplishing things that I want to do. Like, I, you know, I want to, I want that you know, five bedroom house with my family, wake up for my kids, barbecue in the backyard, you know what I'm saying? And you know, kiss my wife in the morning, things like that. Oh but yeah. It's, oh yeah. It's being able to, to to keep reminding myself that, you know, if I really want to get there, I'll get there. Even though I can't really see it right now, I don't get frustrated. You know what I'm saying? And the next hardest thing <coughs> would have to be dealing with our little roadblocks and speed bumps that come my way because I mean even though you know I've taken a I've gone in a different direction than where I used to be in the past and where I was going you know there's still going to be some bullshit that comes my way and everybody knows that oh, you yeah. know what I'm saying it's just going to be thrown at you left right and center right it's just navigating through those things and keeping a clear head you know what I'm saying oh yeah um it's crazy man and keeping your head above water while trying to above try water <laughs> but you know what it's it's all about it's all about your atmosphere. It's all because the thing is, we're all humans. You know what I'm saying? So we can't be a powerhouse all the time. Oh yeah. Right. So there are times when we have to draw that energy and have to draw that strength from from things around us, different entities and different energy sources around us. Right. Oh yeah. So like sure. you know, you know, it's the people you have around you. Like you know, my girl, she keeps me stable a lot of times. You know, frustrates me sometimes. But keeps me stable most of the time. That's the same way I feel about my girl. <laughs> yes, I know you're watching downstairs right now. Um, and you know my kids, my mom, my sisters, and my friends, my cousins, my support. I got I got some cousins, man. Like they they will not. I remember because you know some of these that didn't know. Like I I was actually a victim of a like multiple shootings. So I got shot multiple times. So that was a very traumatic time for me and whatnot, right? Um, and for those of you out there running around with the gun and shit, you know, at first when I was young I thought, yo, it'd be cool if I got shot somewhere and I'd survive, like, you know, that's a ballast car. 
No, shit hurts. <laughs> it hurts. I cry like a little bitch. It hurts. Trust me. And the trauma you go through, damn. Yeah, there's something I want to ask him about that. I heard bullets burn like a motherfucker. Is yeah. Is that true? And they burns. burn. It burns. They yeah. burn. And especially where you get them because, like, you know, like I, you know, later on I have to show you a picture of my leg and the there's a burnt ring around my leg and then you From just the see redness. Line? Yeah. And then, is that close range, I take it? Yeah. yeah. And um, it depends on where you get shot too because I got one in the head and that, that shit burned. Um, so uh, it's crazy. It's crazy. And those things, when they get inside you, they bounce around and that's and the next thing that, that kind of messes you up too, that's, right? That causes a lot more damage a lot than, more than damage. it going straight through and through. If it's a through and through, the doctors are almost like, oh, thank God. Yeah. It's, it's gonna heal up fine. My kids, all mine are still in me, but they're stuck in places. So when you go through airport security, it's a bitch. I haven't right? gone yet, but my doctor sent me to do an X-ray one time, and the dude that's doing the X-ray, he's behind the little wall, or whatever, and he steps out, and he's like, "Um, sir, can I just ask what happened to you? Because like he's seen all this metal, right?" <laughs> but, yeah. I just laughed and I looked at him and I had this serious face. I was just playing with him, but I had this serious face. I was like, I got shot, G. And then he just went back in the room. <laughs> it was funny. Not a lot of matter, uh, but that was funny. No, but you know what? It's good that you can make light of the situation now. Hell yeah. Uh, how long ago were you shot? Um, This October will be two years. Wow. So yeah, two, two years, years later, and he's able to make light of a situation like that. I have killed to. Him for what else am I supposed to do with it, man? It's not a situation that 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 can, you know, that most people can find any positive relief from. Yeah. Fortunately, I found it, so clearly it's possible. Because the thing about it for me is like there's still, and one of the bullets is in a very fragile place that can turn me around any minute so yeah. it's a constant reminder of the negativity so in order for me to find positive light in it anybody can find positive light in it because i get reminded about it every time i feel a little pain or a little ache or every time i yeah. get up you know what i'm saying so i am with so, this car accident right now which i can't compare it on any level towards getting shot but i can uh, the, the same traumatic like uh, that i can understand having the trauma like the yeah. the, the I guess the traumatization, the traumatization of, of it all. Of it all yeah. When it comes to that stuff and like basically with that whole gun violence thing, like it's, it's, it's sort of like common sense, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like, it's, it's real what you say that like guns do kill people, like you know what I'm saying? Guns don't kill people, people kill people, right? Oh yeah. Like the, we can try to get, the guns have always been there. And they'll still continue to be there. We can try to get a few of them off the street, which is good, and that helps. But it's also it's mainly to just it's mainly to change the mentality of the person holding the gun. Because between you and me, Smith and Wesson will never stop making guns. No. That's their and that's it, and this butter. is where I think my opinion differs from yours a little bit. Is that uh, I believe for every say law. Like for every law, of like yeah. ten law-abiding citizens, there's one criminal who has a gun. Yeah. Now, if those ten law-abiding citizens had guns in order to protect themselves, do you think the number of criminals would shrink? No. No. Do you think that at least the the number of crimes would shrink because they'd be like, oh shit, this guy's dropping on to the next one. It depends on what. Because a lot of guys aren't going to be willing to, to lose their life over an iPhone if dudes no, have a gun. No, no. Um, Unless they're in like that in that light crack. in that light. Yeah, probably most likely. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. But then, given a negative situation, that law-abiding citizen might holding a gun might end up in a situation where they now become a criminal. Yes, yes, right. yes, that's, uh, so that's true. So it's, it's... But that's it's, why you have to have, like, certain gun rights. and Exactly. Like, so, so it's, 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 it's delicate. It's very delicate and fragile. 
right? Because you and I both know accident, shooting, whatever, life changes just like that. Oh, yeah. So I can be a law-abiding citizen right now and have a gun to protect my family and whatever, right? And just like that, I'm on the other side of the fence. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of times, you know, and, and I'm not trying to justify, but a lot of times that's what happens because you feel like you need a gun to protect yourself of that and we don't have the certain laws that they do in the states like exactly the stand your ground law and the the home is your castle law and there's certain laws down there like if a, if if anybody comes into your house police officer ambulance driver yeah. anybody you have the right to shoot them because they're on your property the, the, see that's the thing though it's like in certain areas in certain South. areas but yeah. if you can get to the point where the mental state of of, of people is to realize that hey is to realize that um that like when it comes to the gun there's really you can say, oh yeah, you know, I'm this, I'm a law abiding citizen, whatever, whatever. But, you know, guns push out negative endings, non happy endings. On both like sides. On both sides. It's like a magnet for negativity. Definitely. On both sides. Because even, even, and, and you know, I might get flagged for this, but even a police officer having to use his gun on someone puts him in a certain state of trauma. Oh, yeah. Right? Definitely. definitely. So, so, and even someone being shot or someone even even if I was still running around as a little thug and I shot somebody yeah that's gonna put me through some trauma too whether oh, I want to yeah. admit it or not oh, you know yeah. what I'm saying oh, yeah. but if you go around and if you go into if we get into changing the mentality of an individual holding a gun realizing where the endings lie right you then begin to realize that the gun is unnecessary and when something's unnecessary it becomes irrelevant to life oh exactly. which means it's, it's useless so you don't have those 10 law abiding citizens saying well if I have a gun I can protect this and whatever, and there'll be less criminals. There's just no gun, period. You know what I'm saying? I think the only way you'll get that to happen is like aliens in <laughs> And like That's everybody's different. just like, all right, we can't be That's killing different each different. other That's anymore because like we gotta kill those fuckers so we can't afford to waste no bullets on each other anymore. I don't know how we can get it done, <laughs> but it lies in the, men in the mental state of individual. Oh, yeah. Because to be honest, like I said, Smith & Wesson's bread and butter is making guns. Exactly. They're not going to stop. Exactly. They have the right to do it. They what are they going to do? Making you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right? Exactly. So, less people thinking they need a gun, less gun violence. Oh, less yeah. Crime. For sure. You know what I'm saying? I think the only reason you should have a gun is to hunt. Yeah. That's the only reason why you should have a gun. That yeah. and the zombie apocalypse. I've, I've had guns. I don't need them no more. I don't have them no more. But then again, you don't like I I I come my my family hunts and uh, I'm the only one in my family besides my mother who have who hasn't gone hunting. Yeah, and that's like an experience I would love to have to actually have. But but hunting an animal is different that I respect compared to, to, that, to, to, that to I respect hunting. That. That's uh, that's what I was talking about in culture. Yeah, know? yeah, right? like it's a tradition and it's something that, that I would like respect. to have. That's and something. You know that 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 I respect, and then that's well. Ted Nugent's and got a killer idea. You know what he does? <coughs> he has like I think it's like some sort of hectares worth of land, and what he does is he has a certain amount of animals on that land. Yeah. So he goes out every day, and he'll like it, whatever he feels like eating that day. He'll kill. It. He'll hunt that, kill it, and then go back to the house, skin it. Everything. That's a lot of work, man. I'll just go to pizza store, man. <laughs> but that's a, that's that's a sustainable lifestyle, and if you got the money for that, like like you do know, your thing. do your thing for sure, straight up. <laughs> Say Ted Nugent. But uh, I think it's time for us to get this thing wrapped up, and uh, there's a few things I wanted to get out of the way, like uh, giving a shout out to P. Rain for giving. Toronto mad respect during our time of crises and during all these shootings and I know he was uh, boys with the uncle of uh, yeah. her name was Cheyenne or Sh I don't want to get the girl's name correct uh, incorrect but my, my apologies no, we're talking about. you guys know who we're talking yeah. about the young girl who was uh, a potential superstar with the voice that she had and uh, it's a it's a sad day when you 
lose a young life like that and uh, also the 19 year old who was shot down the block from me and uh, the 43 year old who was shot behind me the night of my accident at, at behind my house uh, there's uh, all the people from the Danzig shooting all the people from the Eaton Center shooting all the people from Colorado the the, the entire Sikh community my heart goes out to all of you and uh, I give you a shout out and uh, we here at Spitballing would like to reach out in any way possible and if you guys would like to hold any podcasts in the honor of any of the victims of any of these tragedies please contact me on Twitter at at Jordan underscore real talk or email the show at spitballing with JT at gmail dot com and uh is there any more things you'd like to say um just a shout out again to everybody that supports me from family to friends um breaking the cycle the whole crew huge huge shout out to a lot of lives that we've lost um during this violence during past violence years ago uh, a few of my friends um shit's gotta stop i got kids and Damn, yo, I don't want that shit, like, you know what I'm saying? It's 2012, um, why the fuck are we still shooting at each yeah, other? Yeah, like, I mean, every, it's such a small, <laughs> but I never really say it's a small world. I say it's been the same size, there's just a lot more people in it now. Everybody's connected to somebody, <laughs> you know what I'm in saying? Some, you might not know, but you're more. probably killing your cousin that you might end up meeting down the line because, you know, you're related. I met someone two days ago that called me over the phone to go, you know, to go um, do like an interview or something like that and we're talking and it turns out that we might actually be related and I've never <laughs> met him in my life so that's some bullshit that's right a that's small that's world gotta, that's you know? a small world so shit. if you want to hit me up um, uh, email address is caldrick that's c-a-u-l-d-r-i-c-k dot w at gmail dot com also Caldrick, which is same spelling C A U L D R I C K underscore M at hotmail dot com. Um, or get in contact with Jordan, Jordan get in contact with me. Alright, man. You know? Alright, so thanks for having me. You guys, thanks for listening. And Jordan. Uh, special thanks. Love. You already know. Yeah, man, for sure. Appreciate it. Special thanks to uh, my mom, Connie, works at uh Vina Novus, uh rehab clinic for the lighter loving it thought that was hilarious has anybody seen a lighter the size of that before <laughs> if you have get at me all right guys we'll see you later and uh, i hope you all enjoyed the show and uh there'll be more interviews coming as soon as possible